Okay, I think we're now live. Great, thank you very much. And um, morning, morning, members. Um, morning. Governance Working Group meeting. So, um, Gemma, have we got, uh, do you want to take us into the start of the agenda? Yep, of course. So, I'll start with apologies for absence. We've had one apology from Councillor McConville. Um, the next item is declarations of interest. Do we have any declarations, members? No. No. Okay, we'll move on to the minutes of the previous meeting, um, 4th of January. Are they agreed? Yeah, all agree. Great. Okay, I will then hand over to uh, David. Thank you, Gemma. Um, so I suppose that, that in terms of the agenda items, the first item I think for discussion is um, th well, the motion. Am I am I right in in saying that, Gemma? I don't have a sorry. I've, I've, I can't seem to find my version of the agenda. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Obviously, you're all very fresh from from last night, um, and my well, in a nutshell, my understanding. I did I did tune in um, slightly after the meeting just to to have a look and to see what what happened. So, obviously, I'm aware um, that the council had made has made the decision to postpone implementation um, until um, next year. So, in terms of how that impacts upon delivery, um, of course, it gives us more time. Um, so, I think that that we've got to think about what the reasons behind it being put back um, were specifically um, helping members to become more knowledgeable about and invested in the committee system and, and how it, it's to be delivered and how it works in practice, etc. So I think from my perspective, I would propose that we look at, at that as a priority and, and look at setting up some sessions that we can deliver um, for, for members and officers um, as well. I think it's important that officers are, are, are involved because, of course, it, it impacts upon them too, um, to, to to get that understanding and knowledge and, 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 and I hate to use the, fr the phrase, but I'm going to use it, buy-in um, to, um, to, the, to the move over to the committee system. So that's a priority, I think, now. Um, we've still got the, the um, high-level principles and structure agreed. Um, that doesn't fall away. Um, that might be something we look at and revisit. Possibly, it probably won't change. Um, I suspect, but you know, it might. Um, and I know we've, the consultation is also live, isn't it? Um, presently, so that's still very valid and very relevant um, to feed into how things develop moving forward. So, it'd be useful for your thoughts around what might be helpful for yourselves as members in terms of a programme for um, helping you or enabling you to not necessarily understand the committee system, because I think you do understand it. It's just more about getting to know how it works in practice and how you want it to work, and then hopefully being in a position whereby once we get to the point of implementation, everybody's on board, everybody understands fully how it's going to work in practice, um, and then you can hit the ground running. So that's the intention. Um, so it'd be really helpful if, if for, for any views on on how that might be delivered. So, um, uh, David, maybe if I I can kick off uh, just to talk about my own kind of absorption of this amount of uh, information. Um, I uh, I uh, have really uh, well. I feel confident in terms of the principles. Um, and uh, I'm 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 pretty good on the processes as well, you know. Um, uh, it's it is it is the mechanisms in terms of how do you know how do we deliver this? How do we deliver that? You know, you know, it's the and and I think Tim pointed out to me uh, a few weeks ago. What I'm actually concerned about is the transfer of our you know, cabinet mechanisms into a committee system rather than the committee system per se, as it were. Do you know what I mean? So it's just it's just a heck of a lot of stuff to kind of swallow and 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 get our heads around. Now I I completely endorse and support your idea about uh, I would I and maybe it's something we could talk about, but I think we would need probably um uh, three or four uh, all member 
consultation sessions uh, on it. Uh, uh, and, you know, maybe with a focus uh, for each of those uh, uh, consultation uh, uh, sessions. But the thing that I would like to say in terms of, you know, where we go, I, I, I don't want to stop the momentum uh, that we have. All right. You know, not the kind of breathless rush towards the brick wall kind of thing. But, you know, I, I don't think there's the vote last night is any reason to slow down. I would like to have a draft constitution um, uh, uh, for May. Uh, now, that draft constitution, in my view, and I'm completely open minded on this, please do you know, correct me or, or contradict me or, or so. Uh, but I would think that that draft constitution then can be given to members and in our own groups or in our own subsections, whatever way we decide, we can we can turn the pages and we can get familiar with with the mechanisms, with the operations. So so what I'm saying is I don't want to kick the ball to kick the can down the road into, you know, next winter when we're looking to have a first draft. I would very much like to have a first draft, if not May, you know, during the summer. I, I, so so people can turn the pages, raise their queries, have them addressed, and then, you know, come come back. You know, I, I, this, this, this is really about keeping the momentum and let, let's get it done and let's get people's questions answered. So that's where I am on it. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Excuse me, that, that's really helpful. I absolutely agree. We don't want to lose momentum at all. I think it's really important that we maintain the momentum. In terms of having a, a, a draft constitution available for you know the summer, we can certainly work towards that. My only uh, hesitation in, in that respect, and I'm not suggesting that you know the first draft will will be available next winter i think that's that's you know too too late in terms of looking at the new time scales that we've got but i absolutely agree you know the sooner you can have a, a first draft to to review and to 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 go through with your groups is is going to be beneficial so we can aim for the summer but i think as well we need to remember I, I mean, what i don't want to do and, I, and i've seen this before and have have done this before um where I've been asked by a council against, you know, the the advice that I gave, to hurry through and rush through a, a draft constitution and provide it to them, which took quite a, a long period of time. I have to say, to well, I say long period of time. It was all um, condensed into a, a matter of days, in fact, but very sort of intense working, um, only for that to be, you know, before the group. The groups and the members and then at the end of a, a longer process the final document didn't bear a lot of resemblance to that initial document that's not to say the initial document was wrong it was just that they wanted different things so I, i'm just mindful that we need to make sure that in terms of use of resources we need to a i think that, as i said the priority for me is is having those sessions and, and the proposal that you put forward, I think is sensible, you know, having focused sessions. So not trying to shoehorn it all into one session. I think having a number might be useful, but then seeing what comes from that and then, you know, thinking about it in within the confines of the group and how that then reflects on what the, the, the first draft of that constitution might be. So it might kick it on a little bit further than may i know you've said you know not necessarily may but the summer um so i think if, if if you're mindful of that and and just that we don't want to well i don't want to be and i'm sure you don't want to be in a position where we produce something which then changes quite significantly so um because you know resources are uh are finite we have to be mindful of that and we don't want to have to be going through things where it's perhaps unnecessary but i'm sure we all we're all on the same page with that so yes i agree let's you know absolutely keep this momentum but be mindful that things might have to be taking place slightly later we've got that additional time frame it doesn't mean we've got the luxury of having of being able to sort of sit back and allow that to tick over um so 
as I say, if we can have those sessions, get get feedback from that, and then look at um, how that then feeds into the constitution draft, and then we produce the draft, and then we can go away, and hopefully it's a document that you can then say, well, you know, all right, we might want to change X, Y, and Z, but it's not significant change, if you see what I mean. Susan, sorry, your hand raised. Thank you. Um, uh, no, well, thank you. And it is helpful, Jim, to have that input. Um, could I ask you to give some further thought um, to, and, and all, all members actually, to what the three or four bits of focus might be? As I understood it, the, um, the, the welcome suggestion is to have three or four all member consultation sessions with a dedicated focus. So I suppose it would be helpful for members to reflect on what, what, what bits of that you would like to focus on just to make sure that we do make sure that the program is designed to address the needs so that would be really helpful if um, they don't need to be given to us today um but if we are going to identify dates um, and get materials and um, various input ready it'd be useful to just to know those areas thanks david okay thank you council martin does that does that sounds That's, uh, i mean you know just just if it's a it's something of the framework to work to i would i would say a relatively short one on process or sorry on principles a relatively short one on processes and then a long one if not two on the mechanisms on how it works um i i think you know i think everyone well certainly speaking for my group Everyone, you know, we 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 kind of got them there on the on the first two bits. But when you look at all of the all of those questions in the question and answer, um, all of the ones that you were unable to answer, uh, David, you know, uh, were sort of yet to be agreed items. Do you know what I mean? That people were thinking in advance of the working group. So so I would I would say a, a, almost a kind of refresh on principles, a refresh on processes. And then, you know, the hard work is around the mechanisms and operations and how this actually works. Uh -huh. OK, that's helpful. Thank you. Councillor Prater. Thank you. Um, yeah, I I can accept that, that those sort of um, focus areas, and I think they make sense. Um, I think it would be useful um, on those to have, uh, although I accept that what you don't want to do is write a constitution and then have 30 councillors look at it and come up with their uh, uh, amendments of the day, um, because we will end up with the world's longest and most uh, uh, disturbing constitution if we uh, write it by a committee of 30. Um, I think if what we've done is <clears throat> listened to people and their input on those four sessions on what the underlying <clears throat> principles the Constitution should have and how it should be working and what the intention of it working is, then that allows it to be written in a way that takes on board as many of those inputs and suggestions as possible, as opposed to you write one and then 30 people say, I don't quite like that. Could we make that number higher, that 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 breadth uh, different, etc.? And I think that, that would be so. So, I, I get your concerns of saying here, here is a constitution which I think meets what you said so far, and then having thirty people pull apart. So I I, I get that actually having those meetings up front would be useful. Um, a second thing, though, that I think has been suggested a few times by a few councillors, um, and I think it would be just worthwhile checking that i'm my my instinct is to squish it and to say that this does not make sense and i wanted to check it amongst the members of this working group and officers as well is that, that there is an ongoing suggestion of well if we got ourselves to a position whereby we knew what the new constitution would be and the new arrangements would be by the winter we could dual run for a phase mm. and i can't imagine anything that is going to kill officers and staff and councillors more than trying to dual run two systems um, against each other, presumably with a cabinet system remaining actually making the decisions, but having the other system in place so that one could discuss it in different places. That strikes me as a, an opportunity to spend all of our time in the civic centre and not knowing exactly what decision has been made at any one moment for about six months. I think that's, that's not an idea that 
I think has any legs, but I just wanted to make sure that we were all on that page um, so that, you know, th th those who are proposing that, that we can be clear at them um, together. Tim out. Yep. <laughs> so, sorry, I can't find my hand this morning. I, I was just going to say, I did I did mention the shadow um, sessions last night, but it, I, I totally agree with you, Tim. I don't think it's appropriate. Um, you know, the resources involved would be horrendous. So um, I think it might have been slip of the tongue as I was um, talking. Great. It's, it's good to know we're all on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> Councillor Thomas. Uh, yeah, thank you, David. Um, yeah, I, I agree with Tim. I think one of the things that we do need to see is um, what this looks like when it is translated from the cabinet system to the committee system. Um, and I think an important part of that is to understand um, how it functions without um, overview and scrutiny and how that is now part and parcel of what we do as part of operating as a committee system. Because I could see that could be an area where people have got thinking, well, hang around, how is this going to be managed? So, again, when it comes to looking at, you know, how we go about it and, and how we focus it, overview and scrutiny is such a fundamental part of how the council is, is managed that we need to make sure that everybody is, is on the same page with regard to what that's going to look like in the future. But as I say, I, I would like to see, um, again, not shadowing, but just a translation to say, currently, this is how this would operate within the cabinet system. And then to say, well, actually, in the new system, this is how it would operate here. And this is where it would function in each of these uh, individual um, uh, new committees. So I think it's, it's, it's not a, it, it's not a, um, a a shadowing per se, but it's it's just understanding how that um, system, the cabinet system, translates to the committee system, if that makes sense. Thank you. I think writing the translation is absolutely right, so that people know how we move from A to B. I, I entirely agree with you, Paul. Um, I just you 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 don't want the translator speaking in meetings for six months because that's just going to lead to a very difficult <laughs> difficult period of running the council. I think one of the other areas, and it, it's probably in the implementation of how it will work, is the spoke. I don't think we've really got to, to grips with what the spokespeople or spokesmen would be, would be what would be their role. And I think that needs breaking down a lot more than what we have at this at this moment in time. And, I, and actually how that as works. As I understand it, we'd lost and killed them. Um, <laughs> It was going to be incorporated into the chair person's yes. role, um, but, but yeah, but it's, I, I, but it's how yeah. that how that actually works. Mm. Yes, yeah, of course, Councillor Martin. Um, uh, thanks, David. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, 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 Councillor Hollingsby has beat me to it, um, uh, and um, that that was uh, uh, exactly what I was going to say. I think I think we may need to do a kind of special, uh, you know, session training session for the current chairs of the committee committees under the cabinet system uh, and not not to shadow but to be alert to how things will change so it's a kind of ongoing discussion that can be had amongst members where they say well of course next year when we're in a committee system we'll be doing it this way you know not a not a shadow you know tim i completely agree with tim on on that uh, but that it that it drops into general conversation about well this this would change you know planning there will be no change you know but the fundamental change that uh, uh, uh paul talks about is kind of will thread through everything that we do uh and and we, you know we just need to be talking about that we need to be conscious uh of that and um and so so i i think the um the spokespeople and the current chairs really need you know, a bit of focus so that so that they can lead those conversations. Uh -huh. OK, <laughs> that, again, for, well, from both yourself, Councillor Martin and, and Councillor Hollingsby, very um, helpful and useful. But yes, um, we can factor all this in and work all this in. And and uh, 
yeah, we'll, we'll yeah formulate how that's going to happen. So, um, was, were there any other comments in in respect of well, in particular, I, uh, I suppose the sessions and how they might work and the topics um, at all? Um, no, one one area of detail that I appreciate some feedback on, if it be possible, David, um, just because it is, it keeps being raised about spokespeople, and you were very clear that you couldn't see a system that allowed them within the committee system. Um, can I ask you to have a review of Tewkesbury that have a constitution with a committee system with named lead portfolio holders, and actually even SRA portfolio holders? um within a committee system um and whether it's whether it's this committee or if, uh, if if you give me some feedback as to why that doesn't work or why why having that might not be or why ha potentially having subject experts on on th th theirs is theirs is split, uh, modeled very much on an executive committee and a scrutiny committee and that's not a model I'm particularly keen on because that still puts the decisions in one place and the scrutiny in another place. And that, right. but across a two committee system, one could have brand, um, subject experts um, potentially um, or on on each of the two committees, and having having seen and been through the Dukesbury model and being clear that they have cabinet members in all bar name on that. Um, I, I would just be interested in your feedback as to how they have managed to uh, deal with the constitutional issues which you raised being a particular issue on that. Yeah, of course. I'm, I'm more so than why change? So why change to a, from a cabinet system to that system? That's what I've been saying all oh, along. That it, it, in that particular instance, I wouldn't agree with changing to that particular system because it leaves all of the decisions in one meeting. As I just said, it leaves all of the decisions in one meeting and all of the scrutiny in another. And that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to allow all council, more councillors, to have actual input into decisions at the point of being made, um, as well as proportionality across those committees. That's why. Um, but um, uh, I, I so I'm not proposing um, that. I'm not proposing all of the Tewkesbury model, but there is an element of it which we were told was not a good idea. I'm just suggesting that we should have a look at how they have achieved something that we were told wasn't a wasn't a good plan, and whether there's any element of learning to be had from that. That is all. Yeah, yeah, ha happy to look at that in, in the context of of you know, well, I'll use the word spokesperson uh, type. Uh, you know, it's I mean, well, you know, you know my thoughts but that that's you know i will look at it um i think that's all it's... Okay. Okay. We, we, we can have the argument when you've looked at it and you can turn around and okay. say for these reasons Tewkesbury are going to end up in jail yeah. um, that's great. <laughs> okay noted yeah susan uh thank you um i was just reflecting on the sessions with members and the mechanisms um and more information on that jim that would be useful um and one area that I think would be would be interesting to discuss with all members is the uh, transition of or reporting into the new system of things like FPPG, uh, Otterpool Park shareholder function, Opportunitas shareholder function and um, EKSDC, of which um, we, we own 16%. Um, so there's a whole bag of things there for, for major things that we had thought uh, in the design would be feeding into the shareholders committee. So I think that there's quite a lot in there, David Amandeep, for us to discuss with members in one of these all members briefings. Um, so I think that that could certainly take up a chunk of one of those. So um, I think I'd like to put that um, on the table, really, so that, you know, at the moment, of course, it's the committee members that act as trustees when the uh, FPPG charity meets. Um, and I think there's a bit of us mapping out what is that transition arrangement? What does it look like? Um, and sort of times four, really. <laughs> um, so that's FPPG, EKSDC, uh, uh, Ottawa Park and Opportunitas. And I think that if members are interested to have that as one of the four, um, I certainly think that that's quite a lot of substance in there it would warrant, warrant a conversation and understanding um, about that bit of the machinery. So hopefully I've got your support for that, members. Yep. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anything else that 
members would like to discuss in terms of how we move forward um, flowing on from the decision taken last night and 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 I mean, of course, what we'll need to do as well, just as I was talking, it came to, to mind, the timetable, we'll, we'll go away and look at that timetable, but obviously feeding in your input around, you know, what needs to happen between now and then, but we need to revise that timetable. So we'll, we'll I'll talk to um, the officers mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll bring that forward perhaps to the next meeting. Susan? Yeah, thank you. Um, and the only, um, it's another implication. So if, are you ready to move on beyond what we might do for the three or four sessions, David? Um, if if you are, another implication arising of the motion last night I was going to raise is, of course, we will need to have um, a scrutiny programme for the coming year. So um, we, there is enough time. Um, it, if we've got Gemma on, um, I know Gemma's given some thought to this uh, for us, um uh, and it might be useful Gemma sorry um, if you weren't ready <laughs> I'm sure you'll be able to respond um do you want to just uh tell give members of uh, the essence of what we've spoken about um and perhaps next steps on that yeah of course so um we did in the background do a little bit of work to get our online form ready to allow submissions from members of the public mm -hmm. so we were planning to go live with that form on Monday 29th of January and alongside that, comms will do a press release, which I believe is already prepared and ready to go. Um, at that point, we will be also emailing out to parish councils to invite suggestions from them as well. And um, we will canvas suggestions from the corporate leadership team and chief officers. Uh, we'll look at any policies that are due for renewal that might benefit from overview and scrutiny input. So our closing date for suggestions allows four weeks. So it'll be the Friday the 23rd of February um, and then we'll take a bit of time just to go through the topics and circulate then the final list to members um, around mid-March so the overview and scrutiny committee will then have their opportunity to score each item based on the criteria we've used previously. Uh, the final topics will be presented to overview and scrutiny at that meeting on the 23rd of April sorry yeah 23rd of April and then, of course, it will then go to the annual meeting in May. Great. Thank you, Gemma. Thank you for um, reminding me about the timeline. But uh, really to reassure members that um, that is the normal rhythm of what happens when we create an OSC programme. Um, normally, Gemma and I have spoken about this in December and got things ready to go in January. So um, with the dates that Gemma's worked through and just explained to you, um, we're not we're not curtailing um, that programme in any way. We're not missing any deadlines. Um, and it does mean that we can follow the proper process of um, OSC having chance to agree and score uh, and, and adopt their program before it goes to May. Um, the, as you say, Gemma, at the AGM. So um, <clears throat> that that is obviously something that we hadn't planned to do if we were going to move uh, this May, but it is something now that we will um, put the appropriate comms around um, and get move forward with. So nothing really for you to be concerned about, but it's just a piece of the machinery with the cabinet system that we just need to get now into 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 play. Anything else from the um, home team on on, on that? Uh, Gemma Ram and Deep Belly. Anything else, Jane? Anything else on um, the forward OSC program? Um, nothing for me, Susan. Thank you. No, um, thank you. Okay. Any questions from members then on that? Nope. Okay. So I guess it was just if there are any other implications arising um, from the motion, um, whether there's anything else that any members want to flag before we move on or from David. And then are we going to talk about consultation and where we've got to? Is that the next item on the agenda? Yeah. Thanks, Susan. <clears throat> yeah, the next <clears throat> item, apologies, on the agenda is um, an update on uh, well, yes, the consultation. So I don't, Gemma, are you able to? Jane. Oh, sorry, Jane. Jane, sorry. Yeah, are you hello? Um, are you able to to um, to provide that, please? I think you're on mute, Jane. Sorry. Thank you. Um, to date, we've had fifteen responses, um, and an early indication would would 
appear to be, and I, I suppose it's not surprising because they've responded, but there is certainly an appetite for um, asking questions via an online route. Um, the uh, survey consultation is open until nine o'clock next Wednesday morning, the 31st, and we shall be issuing a, a further reminder on social media today for anyone who hasn't filled in the survey to date. Um, that's about it for now. That's, I, that's great. Sorry, can I just ask, um, Jane, uh, uh, apart from the theme of our appetite for asking questions, is, were there any other themes that are emerging? Um, and I appreciate it hasn't quite concluded yet. Um, but anything else? Um, accessibility. Um, um, by that, I think they mean by actually having to come to the to the civic centre to ask questions in a meeting, which I suppose, you know, is, is why the online route is popular. Um, yeah, I mean, there are there there's certainly um, some useful suggestions. It, it it seems to me, um, and I know Gemma and Amandeep Deep have had a look as well. It seems to me quite a quite a quite a positive response um, and a welcome to actually be asked to get involved. Um, so, I mean, maybe that's maybe you would say, well, that's going to happen anyway because these are people who respond to a survey. But um, no, I I, I was. Um, Let's say I was pleasantly surprised by the response that we've had. Yeah, could I could I just echo that? Uh, I think Jane's absolutely right. I've had a look at some of the initial feedback, um, and as Jane has said, quite positive. Um, the people who've responded are very keen to get involved, um, to have their say, to be able to ask questions. Um, obviously, the, the deadline hasn't closed yet, but but what I've seen at the moment is that. Um, there seems to be a proportion of people who perhaps can't make it into the council building to ask questions in, in the traditional way and would quite value the opportunity uh, to ask questions in a, in a different way, i.e. either contact the councillor directly and ask questions, written submissions, etc., etc. So I felt that there was a little bit of a... Um, um, not a reluctance, but perhaps because of people's circumstances, they can't always make it into the council chamber chamber and ask questions, but they would like the flexibility to engage with the council through other means. So overall, as Jane said, quite a positive response. Well, oh, that's 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 great. I mean, in terms of um well, not to sort of start dissecting the consultation responses prior to the end of the consultation period, of course, um, just to comment in terms of, um, you know, remote access and, and the ability to to input, to ask questions at meetings in other ways than being physically present. Um, it, it's, there is, you know, well, I'm sure you're all aware of um, the case law, perhaps you're not, I don't know, but uh, around council meetings and and you know what it counts as attendance etc of course i mean you know the, the members of the public asking questions is different from a member of the council being being in, in attendance but it's something that we can certainly look at and, and work in and and why not you know it's if people are wanting that then it needs to be considered and looked at um, well, so thank, thank you. it's also reasonable to look at this in terms of the mechanism of reply as well so just if somebody's given a written question to a committee, there's no reason why we have to give a verbal answer to a written question. You know, if, if, if they're engaging with us that way and they send a question in, then it may be that you get a list of written questions which appear in the agenda and you give them the list of written responses and we don't go through the theatre of reading them all out. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, you have a, uh, you, you, you do it, you do it in writing. If, if that's, if that's, the way that people want to engage, there's no advantage of them being in the room. I, I wouldn't, hugely i don't think it would bring huge value and i think it would uh have be fraught with um some difficulty to have people speaking on zoom into a committee meeting able to ask a question and ask supplementaries or something without having the um so uh and feel that they could do so with impunity at range um whereas a written question absolutely can be dealt with in it can be dealt with in writing people can see both the question and the response it's in front of the committee uh in front of the committee who then can you know 
if it's val it will be picked up as valuable by those committee members, etc. Um, but but without having the potential for long fights and long fights remotely uh, in terms of dealing with it. So uh, I think it's it's look look at how the input is made and how the response to that would be made as well. Can I just say, I, just um, to be a bit wary on this, you know, is it going to open um, it up? Because obviously each department or each top uh, um, cabinet member or, or whoever, if there is an issue that people want to raise, they would raise it with that department. Are, are, would they now be raising it within the committees? So are you going to be inundated with particular questions on, on particular topics or complaints? Um, just, uh, just something to be wary of, I think. The advantage of that actually is the committee then get committees then get to see where large volumes of correspondence are coming from. If a department is at least being asked the same question a hundred times by different people, then committees should be aware of that because something is happening that we should know about. Um, if, on the other hand, there are very few questions coming, very few issues being released, then that's a good thing. Um, so actually, I, I, I don't see that it creates more work answering the question in public, uh, in public, um, but increases the level of um, exposure of that to the committees. Literally, if there's a report that says here are the questions that we've had and here are the answers, then you're more aware of what's going on in the council. That's the point. Well, I still think you need to be wary because you could be overloaded at committee meetings we i think uh, they're going to be more frequent than we possibly thought in the uh, in the initial stages um and this could make them longer that's cabinet all i'm saying that's all i'm cabinet saying and cabinet member reports haven't made council meetings any longer um and yet inform ca uh, inform council better so you know that's all i'm saying okay councillor thomas <laughs> Now, I was just going to support Tim's view, actually, in terms of saying, you know, we, we need to make sure we offer, a, you know, a wide variety without it compromising the operation of the committee, which is where I think Jenny's coming from as well. So I think, um, you know, uh, certainly, you know, many organisations, many councils have had um, experience uh, during um, uh, during lockdown of, of operating in, in a Zoom environment. I think um, there have been, you know, the odd crank that they've had to deal with through that process and I think we've got an opportunity to learn from that but again I, I do share Jenny's concerns as well with regard to making sure that we don't overload the committees and we don't end up with that becoming a little bit of a circus that's all thank you thank you Councillor Martin yeah uh, it's just I mean we all answer questions every day you know, we all we all get email and we 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 answer them. And the vast majority of those people are they may not be satisfied with with our answer, but they've certainly had an answer. So I think I think all members are answering questions all of the time. The people that elect to come along and you know, as as Tim says, join that political theatre. Uh, there are often other reasons why they want to, uh, you know, ask that question in public. And, you know, I hold my hand up here because, you know, I was part of that cohort. Um, so we do we do have to be careful on this. Um, uh, if, every, if everybody is, you know, if everybody wants an honest answer to an honest question, they can pop it on an email. And they'll, and they'll get an honest answer to an honest question. Um, I, I very much see and value uh, the, the opportunity for a public question, uh, but we, we do need to be wary of it because we could, you know, bog the whole process down with, as uh, Tim says, a fight on Zoom, you know. <laughs> uh, so, so I think that's one, one of these things that we've said that we will look at and um, you know, amend in practice. In uh, as the pro, you know, after a couple of years, we may decide that we need to do more of that, or we need to do less of it, or whatever. It just depends on how people, how the public are using that facility. <laughs> Thank you. So, if everybody's happy to move on to the next um, bullet pointed item on the agenda which is um the arrangements for the consultation event scheduled for the 5th of february so just to to uh, 
remind you it's it's the intention is it's a, a presentation for the public of course um just to give them a, a an overview of to, as to you know what the committee system's about and what the changes are going to be in the time frames and allows allows them to ask um questions it's going to be limited to one hour um as well so but and members of course are, 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 are invited to attend to um so that's what it's what it is um it, it flows on of course from the consultation um so i don't know if there's anything else that that you know Gemma has to add to that in terms of the arrangements that that have been made at all uh, i don't have anything to add okay thank you um and then there, there was uh, arrangements for a member briefing scheduled for the 19th of february i mean that that might change i think potentially given the position that we're now in uh, and and the focus that we we're rightly so um having on um those fundamentals type sessions so that might be subject to to change i suspect it probably will be um and then uh the the next item on the agenda of course was was schedule um schedule of meetings for committees within the new structure of course that we we don't need to tackle that one presently um it's one that we we will look at um in light of the 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 change in the implementation date so it will, it will be moved forward um but of course you know th there needs to be a schedule of meetings for committees within the present structure because that's going to continue for for another year and, and and as susan has mentioned as well the scrutiny program is an element of of all of that too so that's something that will be feeding through um, members and, and being for, for you to to agree uh, and determine um as appropriate so um susan well, yeah can i can just come in on that um uh, absolutely. We, what, what what I was hoping to do this year is to almost uh, get two. Um, well, we we certainly need our uh, schedule of meetings for this year, which of course will take the primary uh, be the primary focus. Um, and I recognise that we didn't get one or two things quite right this year. Um, and as a management team, we're acutely aware of that, and uh, we've got a, a view about why that has happened. However, it won't happen again, hopefully. Um, so for the coming year, with the uh, cabinet session we will have a series of um, a draft scheduling meetings which we will be able to um, share as it's prepared in terms of a schedule of meetings for the committee world from from may 25 um we had started to give some thoughts to what those rhythms were um and they largely were around um as i um, alluded to i think last time probably where i think we'd got to um since we last spoke, is eight or nine resources um, needing to meet at certain points of the year. Um, probably fewer, uh, perhaps four of the um, community and environment meetings, four of the housing subcommittee meetings, and four of the shareholders subcommittee meetings. So we were sort of working on, does that, if, if we went to that rhythm, does it work? So does it does it allow um, things that need to go to resources prior to going to council? Does it allow for that rhythm? Uh, does it fit with our um, quarterly reporting requirements? Does it fit, you know, the dates of audit and uh, governance committee meeting before they recommend certain things to council? So we will work through all of that in terms of just our sort of statutory reporting requirements. Um, and our sort of custom and practice about how we report um, and engage with scrutiny in the new world of time timetabling. Um, and we will we will obviously be able to share that at a future meeting of this, uh, David, in terms of this is our sort of working assumption um, Do members. Um, see any problems with it <laughs> but from an operational perspective we think this this may or may not work um so we'll we'll, we'll bring that back to a future meeting if that's all right um it, as i say um it, it was something that we'd started to apply our minds to and um sort of Gemma has certainly been working with some of the, the key senior managers about all of that so that hopefully that's a that's an update for members thanks david thank you susan councillor martin uh, sorry, uh, David. Just to just to go back uh, to the public event, mm -hmm. um, uh, obviously scheduled in the council chamber, uh, and will be a presentation 
uh, rather than a consultation. Is that, am I right in saying that? Yes, it 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 is a, a presentation um, rather than a consultation. Yeah, so um, so it's a presentation as to where we've got thus far, what's happening, what it might look like. It's not going to be boards and post-it notes and what do you think. It's it's just reporting back. Absolutely, yeah. It's simply a exactly as you've said. It's it's not about um, um, consulting on things generally. It's just. This is where we are. This is what's going to happen, and this is what the nature of a committee system is. That sort of thing. So, sure. yeah, it's, it's sure. um, I'm very happy with that. Yeah, sorry, uh -huh. and this is just a, 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 a thing of the committee system. It comes at me from all sides. Um, so, in in terms of you know, uh, Susan's. I'm sorry, Susan. I'm always about ten minutes behind you, as you know. But as Susan has talked about. Um, you know, uh, the outside bodies, our, our profit making uh, bodies, just as an example. Um, but it but it applies to several other things as well. Um, so we've got our two main committees. Um, can we create these subcommittees to deal with these specifics before we instigate a committee system? Do you see what I mean? Because the two principal committees have to create these subcommittees according to the principles, as I understand it. So are we able to, 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 to talk about something that is, you know, super important, as uh, Susan has outlined, before we've, uh, before we've constituted our two principal committees? Do you see what I mean? Um. Yes and no. Are you suggesting, I mean, within the the present structure, how how it works within the present structure, or or are you saying, you know, we want to get what in essence will be a working group up and running now that then will feed into the new structure, and therefore these topics will already be well rehearsed or you know understood. Is oh. that? I, yeah, and, uh, yeah. I want a practical route to doing it, to delivery. I, I don't want, you know, w w one of the issues I had is, is, you know, what happens on day one is the first thing we have to sit down and create all these subcommittees to carry out all of the different functions to report back into the principal committees. Is is there some way? Well, I mean, you know, is it is it through creating working groups under the cabinet system in order for them to be in place when we adopt the committee system? Um, it's a good question. Um, so, in, in essence, your concern is about perhaps the committees coming into things cold and having yeah. to, you know, stand themselves up immediately and deal with things immediately. I think. I think. Um, there's, there's probably going to be beneficial that, you know, there's there's some sort of knowledge transfer in place and how that happens. I suppose we can we can discuss um, discuss further. Um, yeah, absolutely right. I mean, it's not simply about um, enabling those who are on these committees to understand the structure and and you know the framework about how the system works. It's about as well, you know, what actual um, topics and subjects and issues and, um, you know, functions that they're going to be dealing with. So, and, and, just, it, it, and just to, you know, just to emphasize that, I mean, this, there's a lot of complicated stuff and it, there's also a lot of deadline stuff. You know, mm -hmm. the, the the committees, these subcommittees, not the two principal committees, but the two subcommittees on these specifics will often have to hit the ground running. You know, mm -hmm. they they will they will suddenly be asked for decision, 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 decision. You know, um, is going to so anyway. That, so so that was just that was just my thoughts. Okay, yeah, thank you, Councillor Martin. I mean, in, when when you're thinking about, for example, the shareholder subcommittee, what will they be doing? Well, their role will be taking the decisions that would have been made by the relevant, you know, cabinet member or or whatever. It, it, so there will still be, you know, we've still got. The, the the officers and and their scheme of delegation and what they will be doing behind the scenes. So um, there's that element too. So it, it's not. I, I mean, I I, t I I totally accept what you're saying. There needs to be um, 
there will be time critical issues that need decisions taken and, and to be able to take those decisions you need to be able to have relevant understanding and knowledge and information before you so we need to look at how we can best prepare those yeah. committees to have that knowledge and that's i think a, a more detailed discussion but um susan did you want to come in at one point sorry yeah, I think I understand what um, Jim's asking. Um, and I think what I would suggest to members, if you give me time just to explore that with, with Amandeep about under a current constitution, could we create uh, an advisory group that could, in effect, act as a shareholder subcommittee um, as a way of uh, preparing ourselves for next May. So I understand totally, Jim, what you're asking. I think I just need a bit of time outside of a formal meeting to look at the our current constitution with Amandeep to say what's the art of the possible. Um, and I'm thinking along the lines of your um, the shareholders meeting that we currently have for Otterpool Park. Um, is there an opportunity to consider who are the attendees at that? Because in effect, that it, it, could that grouping of members, in effect, is almost what the shell the subcommittee will look like um, in due course. So, I, if you give me some time to look it through with them and deep, and um, if we can, if we can come back with something on that, we will. We certainly will do. I think it would be good preparation as 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 we move towards the. You know, May 25, it's, it's one of those things that we could probably test and try out without it being too an, a, a new really additional burden on staff on the resource that we've got. OK, thank you, Susan. Um, Councillor Hollingsby. Yes, I was I was going to say in terms of resources, uh, uh, you know, the resourcing of that uh, with staff. But I was also going to say, you know, we had a complete change of uh, administration in May. Um, from from what I've seen, that didn't really cause us too many issues. People people were at, at the, all the cabinet basically, apart from perhaps Tim, um, were were new were new to that role. And so I I don't think we need to worry too much. But what I would suggest is perhaps that um, um, the training sessions that that were held were were great were yeah. were excellent. Have them a little bit earlier. Um, before the end of the year, so that people, you know, we're going to have sessions now with members um, where they can ask questions and, and be consulted and, and, and input. So they will have quite a, um, an extensive knowledge of how the system will work by the time we get to next uh, May 25. So if you ran some training sessions prior to that, to May 25, instead of perhaps after May 25, then I think that that would suffice, to be honest. Yeah, noted. Thank you, Councillor Hollingsby. Um, Councillor Prater? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say it because I don't get to say it uh, often enough. I entirely agree with Jenny on all of those points. Um, <laughs> in, term, in terms of dealing with the transition from one system to another system, uh, in May last year, we ended up with a lot of people who hadn't seen the system, any system at all, had never been on a council at mm. all, ended up being the majority of a cabinet um, mm. in a system that they had never understood at all. The difficulty of transition is not as great as that would be, from one system to another, is not as great as that learning curve would be, but as you as as Jenny says, I think you know the training and how stuff works training, if we've got that in place a bit earlier, then people will have that that moment of move, move from A to B um more smoothly. So yeah, uh, I, I just wanted to enjoy the moment of agreeing with Jenny uh, in public. <laughs> well I was I was also enjoying it, Councillor Prater, because I could see you nodding away while Councillor yeah. Hollingsby was talking and it was uh, a, a a nice a nice sight, I have to say. It was a beautiful <laughs> moment for everyone. Beautiful. It really was. <laughs> it does Thank happen you. occasionally, Tim. <laughs> it had to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I think that um, is everything that. I, well, certainly I wanted to cover. I don't know if um, you know Susan or or Alan Deep or, or Gemma or or, um, or Jane. In fact, have anything else to to add from from the, our side of things? Or nothing further from me, um, David. And thank you, thank you, councillors. Okay, fantastic. Right, well, um, 
Yeah, thank you all for 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 coming along today and for the input. It's it's very helpful. And as I say, we'll um we'll be coming back to you with proposals and revised timelines. You know, proposals of how we're going to be delivering um the support that's required and and what things are going to look like moving forward. So, um, so that but that's been really helpful. So thank you all for that. Um, I'll hand over to Susan to close or or. Um, yeah, unless there's um, anything I think we've captured, have we uh, any other outstanding issues? So thank you very much. We've um, got, uh, there you go, in, in, the, in the hour for you. So, great. Thank you very much, members. Nice thank to you. See you. Bye. Thank you all. Bye. 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 Bye.